know, it's a category, but it's producing a lot and it's tasting very good. Also, I'm doing some kind of diversification uh, with another stuff like vanilla in, in vanilla, you know, vanilla beans, you know, they grow well in the coffee farms. And like I told you, I started the, fr the first uh, only certified uh, World Coffee Research Coffee Retro Plot for producing seeds, Pacamara, we're going to take a seed in the world. Um, so, um, to go moving faster, and how long to time? It's fine. Okay. okay? <laughs> um, I get too excited, so tell me if I want to. <laughs> but uh, um, this is the royal resistant coffee varietals that I have selected. Uh, Colombia, you know, Colombia variety, it's very good. Uh, Castillo Naranjal, Tambo, Rosario, Icatu, Red and Yellow, Parainema, and a Cafe 14, the FX, which is a short plant. Then the Lefon Hybrids, which is a, a hybrid that was developed recently in Nicaragua, they're winning all Cup of Excellence. Los Pirineos Carimor and the Carisic. This is a plant um, that um, Tim saw when he last visit, it's 18 months. And with the perfect conditions, is producing coffee. Usually this will have taken four years. But it's been producing in 18 months, we have all this. So of, of high quality, what I have chosen to, um, of course, the Pacamara. The Pacamara was developed in my region, exactly where I'm, the area where I am, the coffee region, that was the Pacamara developed in 1954. And, um, and I'm producing the, the red Pacamara, the orange Pacamara, the yellow Pacamara, the Bourbon Elite, the Bourbon's red, pink, orange, Tequisic and the Laurina, which is the Bourbon Point you that you maybe have seen it, but it's a, it's a coffee that has 0 0.0009 caffeine. And I already saw that, so that's not a big deal. Then we're doing the, the Kenyas, the SL28, the SL24, the Rume Sudans, which are tasting amazingly. It's, it's an incredible tree. It's against uh, well, um, weather, weather warming because the tree, I don't know why, because probably Sudan is in the desert, I don't know why but it's very good for, for, for rust, rust resistant. The geisha, the maragasia, and then I have uh, three heirlooms, Ethiopian heirlooms, HJY and YDHJY, because one <coughs> comes from the Harar region, the other one came from the Jima region, and one from the Nigeria region. So they're completely different. And then we have the Kenya Batian, and then we have some Ajaba. These are the what we have, have selected. So um, continuing with the industrial processes level, um, what I did, I built um, a modern micro mill that was able to work with small batches, varietals, and micros independently, simultaneously. Because, um, of course, you can produce all these coffees in a small amount, but they're all going to pick up almost on the same day, probably, so you cannot mix them. So you have to make all these changes to your mill in order to be able to do that. Uh, so I was able to modify the, the wet mill. Um, I learned a lot of processes, um, especially with Oric Approach. They asked me to, to do the... the uh, uh, the extra washed coffees, you know, that they were finding that these coffees were giving, uh, even tip, um, and shade dry, there were coffees that were giving more shell life, so I built a mill in order to do that. Um, we built a very, one of the largest African beds parts for coffee drying. Also, we have an a, a, a area for control fermentation processes that we do our skunk secret projects, you know, about that. We, you know, it's control temperature, gas, and everything. Um, you will try some of those coffees today, too. And um, the temperature control rooms and different fermentation processes are a thing that is a lot of people are trying now with different yeast, uh, with different gas, uh, you know, all these processes have been studied in Colombia. And, and believe me, in Cup of Excellence right now, some of the coffees that are being competed are, are, are being differentiated by coffee processes. Uh, so we bought uh, two electronic sorters. Um, build a, I'm building a, a new modern coffee lab in the mill. And also, uh, here's my announcement for Rainbow, but uh, we, one of the things that we do different for other uh, millers and producers is that uh, millers tend to buy the grain products or to pull the bags to protect the coffee when they're doing the export. I do the opposite. I buy them as soon as I get the parchment. So as soon as my coffee is processed and the parchment is put in the grain pro bag and sealed. Why is it important? Because you can, you can maintain the humidity level constant in one your warehouse. The problem when you're milling is that when you pick up the coffee products that are raining, but in May it will start raining and your humidity level will go from 11 to 15. Then ask me how hard it is to be drying coffee when it's raining, okay? Or you have to dry coffee and usually when you do that, coffee tends to turn white. Sometimes we see the white coffee, so a little bit white, that's because it's been badly dried or badly processed. 
And we started, we established a new micro coding system to identify the separate each coffee farm and processes. Uh, we separated on the warehouse, the variety, the coffee, the, the process, and then we have to do a, a lot of combinations in order to be able to come to, to a micro lab. Some of them can be two to three to five bags. In order to make a 40 bag, we have to do a combination and mix that we do in, in the lab. Um, so we do, the, the, we do the different coffee processes, the wash, the extra wash, the Kenya or the Burundi style, the semi-wash coffees, the yellow honeys, the orange honeys, the red honeys, the black honeys, and the controlled temperature fermentation. This is basically, in short terms, what is really going on. There's some other crazy stuff going on there, you know, like fermentation with papayas and fermentation with pineapple, but, you know, I've never seen that before, and I don't, I don't, I don't see any of those getting COE winning, <laughs> so I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but. Um, I will go slowly and, and on my presentation explain you a little bit what each process is and give you a picture. Uh, on wash coffee and extra wash coffee, you know the coffee, the coffee is uh, pulp natural and um, the 100% of the mucin which is removed, it can be fermented naturally or mechanically. I mean, taking the mucin out can be mechanically or, or the natural process. Water pH is very important. We have found out that uh, when you're doing the processes, um, in, Sometimes um, water from a well is better than water from the rain. And that will give a different profile um, levels. And the coffee can be wash or extra wash. And the extra wash coffee, um, and people tend to, well the process is you put the coffee instead of just, you know, going through the whole process of washing, you submerge the coffee for the most 24 hours. Um, and you leave it in water, and clean water, and then you take it out. You know? And so it's a bit, uh, those coffees tend to develop a little bit more of, of acidity and they'll increase shelf life. And also they can be um, sun or shade dry. This is one of my shade dry stations. What you're seeing here uh, is 46% is of shade on the, on the canopy. And you see the people that was moving the coffee and that, that's parchment looks very clean, very white. That's because it's been sold for 24 hours. Then you have the semi-wash, one of my favorites. Um, the the coffee is pumped natural. Uh, it can be mechanically or natural fermented. The thing is here that 